Hi guys, my name is Zane Cashlin. And I'm Josh Paredes. And today we're going to be presenting on how cockroaches that feed on caffeine can improve their sense of smell. So you know when you wake up, or really when your parents wake up, as you can see on this picture, a lot of adults in Kermit here drink coffee. And they do that because it stimulates their brain and allows them to really wake up. And so in coffee, there's something called caffeine which is a neurostimulant, and it does a couple of things. It improves motion-related behavior, increases body temperature, and increases heart rate. And here's just a couple products that you might uh, see every day that have caffeine. And so you guys may have always wondered, you know, why? Why is my dad or mom uh, so addicted to caffeine? It's because, you know, it helps them get stimulated, helps them wake up. And so you'll find it in coffee, you'll find it in energy drinks, things like that. Um, and so in this study, we were testing uh, and looking at cockroaches and cockroach physiology. And so cockroaches have antennae, as you can see here, these two antennae here, that detect smells, which is called olfaction. It's the abil ability of olfaction, and it's one of our five senses. And these antennae gain signals from smells in the environment, and sensing smell is important for survival. And so it's able to send those signals to the brain through these antennae and things on them called neurons. And neurons are basically brain cells. It's the things that can detect those signals. And so our big question was, how does caffeine affect cockroach olfaction? And again, olfaction is that ability to detect smells. And so why study cockroach olfaction? Why were we even interested in this in the first place? And so looking at caffeine in previous studies, we were able to see that in previous studies, honeybees um, like in honeybees, that caffeine improves both olfactory learning and sense of olfaction. So basically the memory of smell. So, you know, maybe you smelled something many days ago and you remember it. Um, and the sense of smelling or olfaction, um, it's been shown that in other animals, caffeine improves sensing smell. So you can imagine here in these honeybees, if you were to give them caffeine or give them something with caffeine, like coffee, their ability to smell things like nectar improves. And so our hypotheses, which is like our educated guess of what's happening um, for our experiment is that caffeine induced B dubia, or in other words, this type of cockroach will show improved olfaction compared to non-caffeinated uh, control cockroaches. And this is shown by a greater success rate and decreased time to approach an attractive scent and a neural firing, so based on those neurons that we talked about earlier, will increase in caffeinated uh, B. dubia compared to the control group when presented with a non-attractive odorant. So basically, both of these hypotheses um, are aiming at saying that we expect caffeine uh, administration in these cockroaches to improve their sense of smell and, uh, like we said earlier, it's called olfaction, so to really improve olfaction. So after we generate a research question, these are our methods. This is how we are going to conduct our experiment. So basically we start with our cockroach housing and how we are going to take care of them. We have 32 cockroaches um, that we separated in four different containers. And so some of the groups um, had caffeine and some of the groups did not. We had eight adult male cockroaches that are caffeinated eight male adult cockroaches that are the control group, which means we did nothing to them. So they're just regular. And then the same thing with females. Um, in terms of the food, this is what we changed um, in between the caffeinated and control groups. We dissolved liquid caffeine into uh, cat, cat food and gave that to cockroaches to eat. So we did that, we gave the cockroaches the food and water and they had free access to consume this for three weeks. And every, other, every day uh, we recorded the amount of food that was eaten to make sure that the cockroaches were eating their food. Next, we wanted to look at the, behavioral, uh, the behavior of the cockroach, like what they would do um, when they are given caffeine. So we designed this uh, four-pronged choice chamber where the cockroaches will start in the middle and they get to go into one of these, one of the four branches up, down, left, or right. 
what we did is we put uh, vanilla and syrup on a piece of paper because that's an example of an attractive odor, something they would like. And we put it in one of the four corners and we wanted to see if the cockroach with caffeine would go to the right, um, the right side of the chamber. So this is how we recorded. We used a tripod and put a camera to record the cockroach behavior. And we recorded a pass, which means it was successful when they chose the correct side of the, the box with the, um, with the vanilla and syrup. And if it was a fail, that means they did not choose the right branch or they didn't exit the choice chamber in the correct amount of time. We did this four times per cockroach. So that was one half of our experiment. The second half of our experiment was actually recording the neural firing that Zane was talking about earlier. We wanted to record the action potentials, um, which is what it's called when a neuron sends a signal to the brain. So we started by anesthetizing the cockroaches, which means we wanted to make sure they don't feel anything when we do this surgery. Then we cut off one of their antennas and put a wire in it in order to record the neural firing. Um, we also used this application called Spike Recorder, and that's where uh, we were able to record the spikes. As you can see, this is a, a picture of an actual um, experiment that we ran on one of our cockroaches. And you can see all these spikes happening when we present the, the, uh, the unattractive odor to them. So we use a substance called ethanol, which a lot of insects usually don't like. So we recorded, uh, we recorded both the cockroach without showing the um, ethanol and with the ethanol. And we wanted to see the difference, to see whether cockroaches react differently to this like non-attractive stimulus. So now um, I'll pass it over to Zane again to discuss the results of our experiment. Yeah, so um, we had three main results throughout this experiment. And so in the first one, we found that in male caffeinated B. dubia, which is again, the species of cockroach we used, it was found that uh, this the male caffeinated cockroaches showed decreased times in approaching the attractive odor. So in other words, giving these male uh, cockroaches caffeine, they were able to get to that, you know, attractive stimulus faster. And so we'll be able to discuss later how this, you know, helps them in the real uh, world in a non-experimental setting. But that was our first result. And our second was that male and female caffeinated B. dubia show significantly increased success rates in sensing and approaching attractant. And so like Josh showed that chamber before, uh, both the male and female uh, cockroaches that were given caffeine had much higher rates of leaving that choice chamber and going into one of the four directions, which um, will explain the meaning of those results. But, you know, that's really helpful for them in the real world. And the results show that they were able to increase or to, to exit that choice chamber, you know, at a higher rate. And last but not least, uh, male and female caffeinated BDW show a decreased neural firing rate. And this was something that was um, against our hypothesis, as uh, Josh will explain on the next slide. But uh, for both male and female cockroaches, their neural firing rate, which was their activity, that spiking that you saw uh, on the previous slide, was decreased. And this was something that we didn't expect and that we'll explain now. So this is where we enter our discussion, where we talk about our results some more. So basically, as we saw in the earlier graphs, the male caffeinated cockroaches, the ones that did uh, consume the caffeine, were able to exit our choice chamber faster. But interestingly, we didn't see any difference in the females. So some of the things that we might be able to explain this by is that maybe the starting area was too small um, because they took a really short time to exit the chamber. So we were thinking maybe the cockroaches decided to try to escape the choice chamber first instead of actually sitting and waiting and smelling the, the attractive odor and going towards it. Um, also in our behavioral tasks, 
the both groups of caffeinated cockroaches showed a greater number of successful trials. And this is good because it means that the number of times that the cockroach actually found the, the odor, the vanilla and the syrup was greater when the cockroaches had caffeine first. And also the amount of movement that the cockroach had could have affected the amount of success they had, but that's something that we didn't measure, but we could measure in a future experiment. In terms of our neural firing task, the caffeinated cockroaches, like Zane said, showed a decrease in neural firing. So they were, there was less um, activity going on inside of their antenna and inside of their brain. And this is the opposite of our hypothesis, um, which means that our hypothesis was wrong. But that happens in science. Sometimes you make a good guess of what happens and it doesn't turn out the way you want it to. But this is what we can explain that we think that because of these results, that caffeine might be like interfering with some of the olfactory pathways in the cockroach antenna, which means that sometimes um, caffeine might be able, might be stopping some of the neural firing that's happening. And that's why we're recording less neural firing in the caffeinated cockroaches. And lastly, for our significance, we want to see what can we do with the study? What can we take away from this and use and help other people in the future? Basically, our study helped us understand how cockroaches, um, how their sense of smell works. And we can also use our cockroaches as a model for the future. So other scientists can use cockroaches to study other kinds of medicine. For example, they could study um, like alcohol or uh, another different kind of medication. And in the future, we hope to learn more about um, cockroaches within different species. We only studied one species, which is the bee dubia, but hopefully we can expand our studies to incorporate other cockroach species and also how um, caffeine can also affect the other senses since we only studied the smell. Um, but some of the other senses would be sight and taste, hearing, um, et cetera, et cetera. And lastly, um, we want to give a thank you for all of these people that helped us in our experiment. We couldn't have done it without them. These are all, um, these are all different people from Georgia Tech. Um, and yeah, that is our study. So if you guys have any questions, um, feel free to reach out to us later on. Oh, and this is the, the references slide. Um, we couldn't have done this research also without previous research from other people who have conducted similar experiments. And so that's where we kind of got our idea and designed our experiment based off of some of these.